able to share this message in a way that glorifies the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am completely 100% dependent upon the Holy Spirit. He's my comforter, my counselor, my friend, the one that's called alongside to help. So I need his help today. Amen. But I'm grateful for that. And maybe this is kind of a new subject to some of you. Listen, we don't cram this down anyone's throat, but we do preach the word. If you've never studied the Bible about this, I want to encourage you to make it an important study in your life. Just read the book of Acts. Study it. Find out for yourself. But open your Bible to Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. I want to preach this morning on the subject, how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I believe that there is an empowerment that all believers need. And two things that we've got to remember, I want to say them right up front, the baptism in the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with your salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to cleanse us from all sin. Come on, somebody give a good amen to the King of Kings. Amen, who died for us. His blood is sufficient. His blood saves us. Faith in the finished work of the cross is, is what, what, what brings us to a place of righteousness in God's sight. And then the second thing I want to remind you of, that this is a biblical experience. There's an experience that is subsequent or after salvation where a person's relationship with the Holy Spirit is deepened, all right? It's deepened as he empowers a person for service in his name. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, let me read it to you. It's on the screen behind you today. It says on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Notice it's a command. Wow. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about for. How many of you know that the word for is another way of saying because? For. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, I believe in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He told his disciples to wait for that empowerment. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell. They were transformed by that encounter that they had with the Lord. They spoke in other tongues. And let me tell you something, those disciples were empowered to meet the needs of that world. Listen, our world still has great needs in it. We still need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit if we're going to be effective today. Because Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 says this, but you will receive receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, I have had the great privilege in my life to be able to pray with many people to receive the Holy Spirit the baptism in the Holy Spirit. In fact, I remember a, a, a youth camp when I was just a young pastor praying until about 3 o'clock in the morning with, and saw so many people receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, that was a beautiful experience. And, and as a missionary in other cultures, I had many, many opportunities. I can honestly say I've probably prayed with hundreds of people to receive that. And I, I remember actually my first experience I ever had in praying with someone. I was 12. I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit when I was maybe 9 or 10. But I was at a kid's camp when I was about 12. I remember kid's camp, all right? And they were praying with people. And I was, I was at, uh, you know, with this one young man every night for about four nights. And it just seemed like he couldn't press through to receive what he wanted from the Lord. And then the final Friday night, like after everybody had gone, this young man received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I can still remember that. I hope I meet him in heaven now. All right. I'd like to know who he is. I don't know some kid in Ohio. He's not a kid anymore. He's probably 60 something years old. But but I'm grateful for those experiences. And so if you're saying to yourself, I just don't have faith for this. Let me tell you something. You don't need the faith. I got all the faith you need. All right. I've got faith that you can receive that. Now, over the years, I've watched people give a whole lot of uh, advice 
to people in receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, and one guy, he, he described his experience like this. He said, there was somebody behind me and they were saying, hold on. And there was somebody in front of me saying, let go. And there was somebody else praying, empty him out, Lord. And someone else was praying, fill him up, Lord. And somebody else was saying, send the fire. Another person was saying, send the rain. Uh, yeah. The guy who told that story said, I decided I better either get killed or get filled, all right? So anyway, I went ahead and believed God, all right? So anyway, I, I want to give sound biblical advice. How many of you think that that's good? Sound biblical advice, all right? We preach the Bible here, okay? The first thing, if you'd like to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, number one, the very first thing is you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, Amen. This, this, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is for believers. Do I got any believers in Jesus in the house today? Amen. I believe in Jesus today. Amen. And, and let me go on a little bit beyond that this morning to tell you that the most important act of faith, the most important spiritual gift you'll ever receive from God, the most important decision that you'll ever make, the most thing that will have the most eternal impact in your life is the day you receive. Repent of your sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We believe that, preach that, know that, and understand that. Salvation is of utmost importance. If you have not settled in your mind and in your heart, if you don't know that you know that you know that you're born again, that your heart is right with Jesus, don't leave this place until you get that. Make, make certain that you're completely right. Come on. That's the most important important thing. In fact, on the very day of Pentecost, Peter preached a gospel message. You know what he said, Acts 2, 38, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for what? For the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The scripture tells us that day, 3,000 people were added to the church. And so if you've never accepted Christ, it's as easy as just coming to him and confessing your sins to the Lord and, and believing in him, saying, Saying the simple prayer of forgive me, wash me, make me clean, and, and, and determining to return away from your sin and follow the living Christ. Amen. It is, and, and, and that's an important thing. And I believe I've got to preach that to every, any time I ever preach about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I've got to preach salvation first, number one, above all. Amen. I'm sorry, I just got to preach it because that's who I am. Now, how many of you realize that that, that, that salvation is a prerequisite to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is not for unbelievers. This is for believers, all right? And uh, some of you might remember college. I, I vaguely remember that, I guess. I did go to college. But there was courses you had to take before. The, you know, you don't take Algebra 2 until you take Algebra 1, right? And so salvation is base number one, all right. But you know what's sad to say is that a lot of people stop there in their spiritual walk. They give their life to Christ and they think, well, that's all there is to it. Let me tell you something. There's so much more to God and His Spirit and the, the realm of Christianity and the Word of God is rich and uh, it's unbelievable everything that God wants to do in your life. But you've got to go after God. And so my second point today is, number two, if you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you've got to thirst and seek after God. Did you hear what I said? Thirst and seek after God. Don't thirst and seek after speaking in other tongues. Let me just preach a minute. Hello? We don't, don't thirst and seek after, well, I need to have some experience where, you know, I feel something or I fall down or something. No, 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 no. Forget all that other stuff. Seek God. Seek God. How thirsty after God are you? How hungry for God are you? You know, the unfortunate thing that in our world today is that we fill ourselves up with so much of this and so much of that that there seems like there's just not enough time or not enough energy to, to really seek God. But I'm here today to tell you that, there, that God has more for every single believer. God wants to be able to empower you in marvelous ways that you cannot even imagine. The life of a spirit-filled, spirit-led Christian is the most marvelous adventure on the planet. I believe that. 
If you were to survey history, you would discover that the people that were, were used by God or empowered by God, they were the people who were hungry, who sought after God, who put Him first. And so I would encourage you today to, to pray like you've never prayed before. Get thirsty enough to read your Bible. Get interested enough to come to a class. Make, your, make knowing Christ your chief aim in life. Amen. Because He wants to reveal Himself to you and He wants to empower you to reach a lost and dying world come on if you believe that give the lord a big hand of praise today amen now jesus was at the feast in jerusalem and he stood one day and he said with a very loud voice he said this he said if anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink and whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And then notice what he did. Jesus explained what he was talking about. He said, by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not yet been given. And so, you know, I can tell you that there are many times people come to church People go to a special meeting, and sometimes they don't receive anything from the Lord because they're not thirsty. They're not hungry. Jesus said, if you're thirsty, if you're hungry. And that's I, what I want to do. What I'm trying to do through, actually through this entire series of messages is get you hungry and thirsty for something greater, something deeper with the Lord. Amen. Jesus gave a great principle in Matthew 5 and verse 6. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, how, Come on. How many know when you're thirsty, you're going to get filled? Has anybody done any yard work lately out there? Come on, you know what it is to be thirsty, right? You're out there, sweat's pouring off of you, man. You come in the house, you grab that big old cup, and you just, I mean, you could just drink and drink and drink. You know why you can do that? Because you're thirsty, hello. Amen, and that's what we need spiritually. We need to be thirsty for God, thirsty for the presence of God. Come on, amen. And when you're thirsty, uh, you know, you say, well, this refers to his righteousness. Certainly it does, but it's a principle, right? Whatever you thirst, after you're going to get filled with that amen amen and so and so if you're thirsty to be filled empowered with the spirit of the living god god's going to fill you with that and when 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 you know and and i'm just here to tell you that when you're thirsty for god you know you don't need the worship leader to encourage you to praise him hello come on uh, you, you don't need, you know, to, you know, have the pastor text you to tell you, now read your Bible today. No, 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 you're right in the Word. You're, you're thirsty, you're hungry, you're, you, you need that. Amen. And, and I don't know about you, but I don't simply want to come to church and have everything so routine, so set. I want an interruption by the Spirit of God. I don't want to go to church without the Spirit. I want to feel His Spirit and sense His power and believe and say, man, you know something? I touched the presence of the Lord, and the Lord touched my life today. Come on, I'm just here today to tell you that it's real. Amen. Amen. You say, well, how do I do it? How can I make sure? Listen, Jeremiah t told us in 29, 13, he said, you will, God, Jehovah God said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Come on. I tell you, if you're thirsty for more, there's more. If you want more from the Lord, there's more. Go after him. And he t scripture tells us that, that he want, that it's about the condition of our heart. Amen. Sometimes we don't receive from God because our heart is just too filled with other things. You know, sometimes you got to put other things aside and go after God. Amen. I don't know if there's anybody who's ever turned the TV off for a while. Put your cell phone in the bedroom, in that drawer, and say, you know what? Let it ring. Come on. Let. I don't care how many likes my latest Facebook got. That's not important. Amen. What's important is I'm going after the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I'm going to experience Him. <laughs> 